Hello everyone and welcome to the EGFH Season 1 Week 1 in Overwatch game. Today we're going to be starting off with a match between the Ludlow Falcons and the Wilbur Cross Governors, followed up by a match between the Sheehan Tigers and the Notre Dame Green Knights. I want to thank our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club and the Yukon School of Engineering for helping us make this season possible. My name is Kevin Navik dignan and I'm joined by David Haunch-Chen. Hello, hello. Today, these maps, these teams we're playing, will start on Hanamura, then we're going to go to Nepal, followed up by Junkertown. And if for some reason they tie on Hanamura today, we'll be going to Lijiang Tower as the tiebreaker. And of course, on the left side, we are going to see the... Oh, sorry, I do apologize. On the attacking side, we are going to, of course, be seeing the governors, and on the defending side, we'll be seeing the Falcons. And I just want to say right now, Horns, what do you think of the current comps? Um, pretty solid. You know, we we see on the attacking side, uh, they're kind of playing like a pick comp, where you're willing to hold the door with the Orisa shield, and then you know, picking off people with those Roadhog hooks. But on the on the defending side, you know, we're usually sorry, on the attacking side, we're usually trying to see like some sort of dive comp, but they've decided to sub out the Diva for the Reinhardt. So we'll we'll see something interesting there. Yeah, we do see the Widowmaker on the side of the uh, the governors there with uh, the Widowmaker on Manny there, of course, being called Manny the Maker, probably after the hero. And she's going to be looking to get onto that high ground along with Taco. Taco using that shield to give her cover so she can find picks left, right, and center. And it's going to be interesting if she's going to be able to find it behind the Orisa shield. So we should see them coming in now. And I would be expecting to see at least half of governors go for the high ground here but we do see manny maker setting up looking for a pick like i was saying they see taco jumping in onto the point trying to disrupt them as much as they can but they quickly fall to the sheer damage output from the orisa the roadhog and the mccree and the hammer and it looks like the governors are going to be just holding regrouping i'd like to see them regrouping here as a six but they are going to decide to push and we see that glib's shield goes down almost instantly then the dino getting picked off by shinarix hook there and falling to the rest of the falcons yeah, it looks like a lot of a lot of the governors are kind of low here, and they're gonna have to regroup, losing Reinhardt and Zenyatta really quickly. Um, I, I really do like this Junkrat pick from the from the governors, knowing that Orisa is probably gonna set up here on the gate of Hanamura. You know, with now switching to the Reaper Manny Maker, and now with the Reaper and Junkrat, they're probably gonna be able to tear down this this Orisa wall a lot faster. Yeah, but along with that Arisa roll, you got to be remembering that, they, that we've got Schnark there looking for those hooks. And as soon as he spots the Reaper trying to come in, and if the Reaper doesn't have the reaction time to rage form, then he's going to get picked off by the hook and then pretty much demolished by the rest of the team. Yeah, but definitely a good exchanges of shields here right at the front gate, you know. They're yeah, coordinating well with their shields, and it looks like they're just going to try to push out a little bit outside of this door and get some more picks. Yeah, yeah, playing very aggressively whilst also playing defensively. They know when to push forward, they get a couple picks, and then they'll peek around that corner and using that Orisa shield very well and managing to reduce a lot of the damage that they're actually going to be taking with... I'd like to say that right now we see Zuem doing most of that damage. His name's been coming up a lot on the scoreboard. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm not sure about how Manny Maker's been constantly switching off on heroes, you know. We just saw him switch to... Yeah, we just saw him switch to to Reaper and now to the McCree, and and now Taco's gonna get hooked and and knocked down by the by Glacier, um, and Moira also falling. Uh, Manny Maker not getting that much ult charge. You know he's the lowest on his team now. Now they finally get this Moira ultimate, but the ult economy is on the Falcon side. Yeah, we should be seeing a rip tire possibly coming out from Zoom. He did have the high ground there and saw a few of them being pulled in by the Arisa but he decides not to and does actually find the double kill there on Star Wars and Dan. And that's going to be another, yet again, another need to regroup by the Governors. And they are actually going to wait for the rest of the team here to push as a six man. If we look at the ult economy, however, on the side of the Falcons, they have all six of their ults ready for this push. Their management has been absolutely phenomenal. We've not seen them use it over aggressively. And I would like to see Zoom again using that Riptide a bit more frequently because he probably could have built it again by now. Yeah, I definitely would agree, but Falcon's doing a really good job of knowing what what priorities to focus, you know, and being able to take down the tank lines instantly, you know, now knocking the D.Va out of this mech and focusing down this Rhine wall together very, very well. Yeah, I, I think we're going to have to see the Governors pull something huge out here with the rip tire, the rip tire and the Earth Shatter, but the Earth Shatter gets completely cancelled there by the Holt from the Orisa. And I think right now they're going to have to try a last-ditch rip tire here to try and just clear out. They're constantly grouped on the side of the Falcon, so I think a rip tire really would do some work. Taco now having that Diva roll as well to try and flush them out. Yeah, and now losing this Mercy in the last 30 seconds of the, 
30 seconds. And now actually losing both supports in the last 30 seconds, meaning that they won't have this Moira ultimate for this final push. Mer Mercy's gonna probably try to come in as fast as she possibly can, but I do agree they need to play around this Riptire right now. Yep, and I stand corrected. The Diva does not have uh, self-destruct, so that was actually her cool mech. I didn't see that, so I'll just correct myself there. And there's the first Riptire coming out from the side of Dan the Dino, but it does manage to find two picks there on Zoom and Fruity Memes, which could be huge, but we see plenty of ults coming out from the side of the Falcons as we were talking about. They were just holding onto them, waiting for this, with Taco jumping onto that point, but Lineth is not far behind him as he finds the mech and then follows to find the Mini Diva. Yeah, it looks like out to pick off Mercy. Yeah, it looks like there's just gonna be a really, really good hold from the Falcons here. The governor's not even able to take much of a tick on this first point, and <coughs> the, the Falcons hold the first point here on round one. So definitely a, a tough, tough attack from from the governor's side. You know, so how do you how do you think the governors are going to react with this defense, knowing that you know they had a lot of trouble? I think we might see a very similar composition coming out from the governors that the Falcons were just told. And we do see the Arista and we do see the jump crap, but they oh, I was can okay. Are we gonna see the May pick? That could be quite interesting working along the uh, Moira to try and pull people out and separate and split the groups up. Yeah, you know, as as they continue to pick these heroes, they still have plenty of time. But I obviously Arissa's a great pick for this for this map just because her shield just fits right there into the gate of Hanamura. There isn't really much good way to attack without that uh, with that shield being up unless they have some way of going vertical and going through that window on the left side. Um, but overall, I I think that the governors have a pretty standard composition. But yeah, but on the side of the Falcons, we see. I am quite curious to see if Lineth's Symmetra pick there is a real thing. I'd be happy to see it. A little bit of attack Symmetra never hurt anybody. Yeah, but, and, and Steve X Torbjorn pick is also there. Um, hopefully, you know, may, maybe they'll switch off. Maybe they're just kind of having fun in their base right now. But, uh, they, they definitely look like they're having some fun if you're looking at the side of the Falcons right now. They're dancing around Torbjorn with all the Symmetra turrets. Yeah, I could imagine, I could imagine. Uh, but, looks like... They're also opting not to go no, not to go this dive composition that we normally see. You know, going this Zarya and Roadhog, definitely going for more of the pick composition. They really like this Roadhog pick. I mean, the Roadhog pick worked for them. We saw plenty of hooks coming out, grabbing people. But instead, we see instead of Snark being on at the Roadhog, we see Zoom being on Roadhog instead of that Junkrat that we just saw. As they are deciding to run triple tank. Which yeah, could mean that their intention here is to use that Lucio speed boost with the Moira AoE heal to just rush through and completely demolish the side of the governor's defense. But yeah, and there we like, find Lina. Yeah, it looks like they're doing just so, and they're gonna they're gonna go three for two in this this next couple of exchanges. Linus going completely off, able to take three out by himself and Glacier, and four out by himself now taking a taco, and they're just going to assault the point here. And it looks like this first map is going to close and go to the Falcons. A very, very solid offense coming from them, knowing that, you know, all they needed to do is get that one tick on, on that first point because of the fact that they defended so well. And Lineth getting that play of the game on that Reaper. Yeah, this is probably why he pushed in with the Lucio speed boost and found two of them here. Yeah, as you're going to see, the Orisa pulls to him right there. Nobody really paying attention to him with a lovely headshot going on to Dan. And of course, that removed so much AoE denial from the Junkrat nade spam that it just managed to let them push through without little to no resistance. <laughs> and there's Reinhardt getting a legendary, getting all the votes from everyone here. Um, great first game, and it looks like we're going to go to a quick pause as we switch over to Nepal.
So the next map we're going on to is going to be Nepal. Haunts, what do you think of Nepal overall? Um, I I really like you know King of the Hill maps such as Nepal. Uh, we we get a lot of more, a lot more hero diversity, especially in in the offensive role. You know, last last game we saw a lot of Reaper, we saw a lot of you know so soldiers, things like like consistent DPSs. Where here we we generally see a lot of flankers because the the map is so wide open, you know, we see Genjis, we see Tracers, especially because of that speed that they need to just assault the point and for them to be able to flank and just get picks off while they're fighting for this hill. Yeah, that would make sense. And of course, we see the Lucio coming out from the side of the, of, uh, the Falcons there with Taco being on it, which is obviously so very important on these maps due to the speed boost, just making it so much easier to get the rest of your team to that point. Yeah, I definitely do agree. Lucio is a, a staple pick here for this team, and it looks like the Falcons are going to go to their standard pregame of Torbjorn and Symmetra and dancing in their base for a little bit. But otherwise, yeah, um, you know, we see Glacier on on this Genji pick. Uh, I really, I really like you know Genji on on points like this, especially since there's so much verticality. Um, there, there are a lot of corners that you know that you can mess with, especially even with Widowmaker. There are a lot of ways. And a lot of sight lines on this map that, that she can really take advantage of. Yeah, that is that is very true. It doesn't matter where you are. Usually, Widow can find an angle on you. Yeah. And, and it is. If you, we should take a moment here to actually talk about. We see Zoom on the Bastion and Stevik on the Torbjorn, and they have been kind of messing around with their picks just before the match. So they're probably going to change over very quickly. But it would be interesting to see if they actually take the Bastion. They don't, they're only going to replace that with a uh, Tracer for Zoom and Linith on Genji. So a very fast attack of style flanking route, like you were saying. Yeah, just the standard dive comp coming out of the Falcons. And, you know, we also have, like, a, a pretty consistent composition coming out of the Governor side. You know, I like this this May pick up being able to help them separate the fight since they had such trouble. And it looks like we're just going to go straight into a fight. Yeah, and we are going to find that fight going in there. We're going to see most of the Falcons jumping in and pushing back the Governors as best they can. Their targets are looking to be pretty much anything with all of the AoE coming out of the Winston. Arissa does fall, followed by Moira and Junkrat. Junkrat managing to find a couple picks there with the Martyrdom from when he dies, of course that being Junkrat's passive, but out of all, all of that, we do see the Falcons winning that fight and managing to take the point for now. So, what do you think the Governors should be doing right now? I think the Governors kind of pulled back a little bit too far, you know? If, if they, they met their aggression initially, but then as soon as they kind of met on the point there, they instantly pulled back, fearing, you know, the power of the, these Falcons. They really needed to just not be afraid, no what to call, what to focus there. But it looks like they're just going to continue to fight for this point. Yeah, and we do see the Governors now actually making their push onto the point. They're going to try and take it with the Arista and the May. The May managing to get into that ice block and delaying it a little bit, but it doesn't matter because as the Falcons collapse onto them there, they're going to quickly, systematically take them down one by one. And as Star Wars looked for an escape there, he wasn't able to find it. And that's a team kill for the side of the Falcons. Yeah, Snark and... then jumping off the edge to reset. Yeah. And from the Falcon side, you know, we like I mentioned earlier, we have these really nice pick heroes for, like the Tracer, like the Genji, coming out really well. You know, being able, and I, I like this this hero pick of of Manny Maker switching to the Pharah. You know, there isn't much uh, that the Falcons can do to deal with the Pharah. You know, they don't have many hit scans, so a great pickup for them. You don't need many hit scans when a Diva's chasing after you in the sky, but we'll see if they actually manage to follow up on that. Which not showing some impressive maneuverability in that mech. Yeah, I do agree, and it looks like even though they are, they are, um, they have more of the numbers here on this top ground since um, most of the Falcons are on the point. They're still having a, the governors are still having a bit of trouble trying to deal with even just half the team. Yeah, and oh, I completely missed it there whilst we were talking about the mech, but Stevic actually jumped in there. I believe that was in like a, a 2v4 and managed to find at least three picks with his ultimate there, showing just how much damage and disruption Primal Rage can bring to a fight, especially in those smaller corridors. And we do hear the Riptire coming out from the Governor's side. He's going to look for pretty much anybody on here to assist him taking the point, and he doesn't find anybody with the Moira Coalescence coming out and the, the Lucio... Uh, my mind completely blanked on Lucio's ult there. <laughs> yeah. But Linus being able to clear a couple of things, including the Orisa and the Orisa drum there towards the end. Um, you know, governors have been having a hard time dealing with with uh, the Falcons here. You know, how do you see them coming back? Is there anything that they should pick in terms of heroes? Um, 
I'm unsure. We, we're seeing a lot of flanking, but we see the Falcons switching over now to the Junkrat and Soldier 76. So a Fyrer isn't going to work out for them because Linus has been absolutely on fire with his hit scan. I think they need to be playing more around Orisa's shield and kind of using that extra light, like sightline that they gain from it and not being able to be shot back. Maybe Five, Star Wars switches four, off of the Roadhog three, to another shield two, tank. One. Round That's fair, but I actually think the Roadhog is a good pick here, you know. Um, if they are able to hook someone and make the game a 5v6, it allows them to be able to attack the point more. It allows them to help coordinate as a team better, I think. Yeah, Taco switched over to Symmetra there at the start of this round jokingly, but as soon as the gates closed, he had to take a second to switch to Lucio, causing his team to actually be slower to the point, allowing the Falcons to take that high middle ground. And now they're just going to have oversight with the use of the Orisa shield. Lineth is going to have free range. Yeah, I definitely do agree, but it looks like, you know, the Falcons is able to just dive onto the point just as the control point unlocks, you know, being able to open it up with the, the D.Va defense matrix and Rosa shield, and they're just going to keep fighting for this point. Yeah, we're going to see Stabber going down almost immediately to... I, 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 that fight went so quickly, I didn't even have a chance to give you the play-by-play, -play as the rest of the, the uh, Falcons here are going to push into the Governors, and they're not afraid of them. They, they really are not worried as Glacier is just pushing all the way up by himself practically, harassing out the rest of the governors before retreating there, clearly getting maybe a little bit. Yeah, and I like this play from the Falcons, you know, even though they won this point, they're not overextending too far. They, they understand their limits and they know that if they, they play out outside of the, the building, then they might get picked off and they might even lose ult. But it looks like the Falcons are just going to be able to instantly take out four here. Yeah, the governors need to be grouping up together here because they're getting picked off one by one and just trickling in and that's not going to be able to defeat the force that is the Falcons right now. They're staying grouped up as six and just managing to output so much damage that they're falling so quickly. Yeah, and it looks like in terms of alt economy, you know, they've now taken out the governors a couple, like two or three team fights in a row and they're going to be really, really prepared with these ultimates. Hopefully this yeah. higher will do something good. Well, we should be seeing Manny here now trying anything that he can with the Dragon Blade. He does have it, and he is set behind the entirety of the Falcons, but he's getting very low almost immediately. The self-destruct from Schnark there, managing to pick off Glib, not allowing Taco to have that extra reinforcements, and he's going to have to retreat, but he does get picked off by Lineth, and that's, again, it should be another restart. If they have enough time to group up the six, but if they keep doing it like this, they're going to run out of time very quickly. Yeah, I just, I just like this trickle initially, you know, committing Taco towards the back of the point just to try to pull the rest of the team back was a good good point initially, but now with the Roadhog also was was too much of an overcommitment trying to just get a, uh, a contest on the point. Yeah, and it doesn't look like... Actually, somebody is managing to backdoor Genji, Manny Maker on the Genji there in the back, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to get it in time. He does pop that Dragon Blade, trying to find the picks, but he dashes off of the edge. He is going to be able to climb back up, but that wastes most of the time and allows Glacier to get that little bit of extra damage he needed to down him. They're trying, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to. And that does look like the first map is going to go to the Falcons. Yeah, now Falcons taking the entire match two games to three, you know, oh, in very quick succession. Yep. Yeah, two games to three. So is that... Or, uh, sorry, sorry, two, to, two nothing. to nothing. Two out of three, my apologies. Yeah. And uh, here we're going to see the play that we actually missed earlier. And this is going to be probably where... No, this is the opening play on the first point where Stevic just goes in and all of that AoE damage coming out of, Tesla, of the Tesla Cannon from Winston just managing to help the rest of his team whittle them down to the point where they fell one by one. Yeah. And um, Glib again getting a, a good chunk of damage blocked and, and getting the most of the, the awards from the rest of the team, you know. Um, how do you see the, the governors, you know, like... They, they were playing well in some points, you know, they knew like at times where to flank and stuff, but they needed to group more in my opinion. That, um, that communication when it came to grouping just seemed to be lacking and they trickled in and wasted probably, I'd say, a good 50% on that second point on Nepal, which you can't be doing. You need that time. Yeah, I do agree. And, and in terms of communication, uh, I feel like the Falcons did a really, really good job of like knowing specifically who to focus, you know, like in terms of comms in this situations like this it's this really important you know like you you have to say like okay we see this rhine shield let's focus down this rhine shield we see uh, a winston bubble let's focus down the winston bubble together so yeah uh, they, i feel like they need to improve their focus on what heroes they need to to attack together because being able to focus on one hero means you can as a six can take out one hero and make it make it the 5v6 you know it's not as powerful as a roadhog hook but in some cases it's just as powerful 
Yep, that's exactly true. And with those picks going down, again, they just kind of dismantled the governors whenever they tried to make something happen. Yeah, I... Yeah. And... I definitely do agree. Uh, but it yeah. looks like we're going to go to a quick pause. We're going to... Uh, our next game is going to happen right, right around 4.15 p.m. EST between the Sheehan Titans and the Notre Dame Green Knights. Um, we'll see you then.